Welcome to Haxby Shed. Two years ago, I fitted an oil pump to this lathe to feed the spindle bearings. I discovered that when the lathe was on the low range, the spindle bearings were not getting any oil. It's a splash feed system and the gears just don't spin fast enough to put the oil onto this front ledge here to feed the spindle bearings when it's on the low range. Now, a number of people said to me, oh, but it must be splashing somewhere that you can't see. Uh, there will be a feed. There isn't, believe me. I looked at it always. It just doesn't get any oil to the spindle bearings when it's on the low range. Now, the lathe was built about 1972, something like that, and it's still here and it still works. So, you know, the, the designers didn't get it completely wrong, but I just wasn't comfortable with the fact that the spindle bearings don't get any oil when it's on the low range. So, I made a transparent lid. I then made a kind of oil feed system. I'll put in a, a bit of video in from the time so you can see what I'm talking about. But I put a pump on it, <clears throat> which was a small gear pump and it wasn't continuously rated. And I had to put that on a timer. So I left that on as a temporary measure. My homemade manifold has three pipes coming off it. This one to feed the front spindle bearing, the middle one to feed the back spindle bearing, and this one going off there to feed the bearing on the end of the power input shaft. Now, the current pump has quite a high flow rate. I didn't balance the output from these three pipes. If I'm using the peristaltic pump with a very low flow rate, it's possible I get flow on the back pipe here and nothing on the front pipes. So I'm going to have to get this lid off and then set it up with the existing pump and check that I've got equal flows and I may need to crimp the end of the pipes here to get equal flow across all three pipes. So these two are about equal, this one's a bit less. This is the back input shaft bearing. I don't think that matters too much. I think that could do. Ready to fit. This is the gear pump. It's fed by this tube, which comes from the back of the gearbox in a copper pipe. And then it pumps the oil up this tube here. It's on a timer because it's not continuously rated. It uh, gives a good pressure and there's a good sort of squirt feed in the gearbox head. But I really wanted something that was quieter and that would run all the time. Now, I looked for a peristaltic pump. I had one about this size. It was very convenient. It was continuously rated, but the flow was quite low. I looked for pumps with a bigger flow. They seem to be quite expensive, but eventually I found one. So I'll put in a bit of video in a moment showing you me doing some basic tests on that. It's a little bit noisier than I would like, unfortunately. But I want to make sure it doesn't get warm and make sure it is continuously rated. If it is, I'll probably put it on the lathe. The noise is, a lot of it's coming from being on a cardboard box and then being against the tin. But I'm just trying to show you the flow. That's been going about 10 minutes. It's barely perceptible the amount that's warmed up. I'm sure this is near enough continuously rated. So it's now pumping the oil up here. There's a better shot of the pump. I'm just draining off the oil. The pipe's here. It's just dropped down from the gearbox. This is where the oil feed goes into the lid. There's a brass fitting there and the pipe just sort of sneaks in there under that corner. Running the pump, the old gear pump that is, I had all this junk, so PC power supply, which are really useful actually, if you've got one, hang on to it, because they supply a whole range of different voltages and they're very high power. And I had this timer in this box so just this thing. So, you know, this was only temporary, so I just shoved it all in the bottom of here. Well, all that can be replaced now by this one little plug-in power supply. So it's now screwed into position and wired up. 
and this will be the feed that goes to the spindle bearings and this is the supply coming from the gearbox oil reservoir. Now there is a gearbox in here between this motor and this head and it is a little bit noisy but not as noisy as the gear pump was. We'll have to see if I can stand it or not. I made a bracket for the previous pipe here and it's a slotted bracket so I can adjust it and I've got this 8mm copper pipe and this is what I'll be using to make the feed pipe. I've got a pipe bender for that. So that's with everything fitted. Copper pipe here runs down to the pump. Connection here to the head. Let's hope I can cope with the noise. That's the only thing. I'm hoping it will be quieter when the oil's running in it, but I don't know because I think it's this gearbox that's making the noise. Here goes. It's certainly strong enough. I can feel that really pulsing in that pipe when I squeeze it. I'm just trying to make this gearbox a bit quieter. It sounded awful as if it was about to seize up. Now there's a slot over here and I managed to squirt some lithium grease into that. I've also made this neoprene strip which I'm going to put under this foot here and then hopefully noise isolate it from the body of the lathe a bit. Well one good thing to come out of this I can take that away. I just didn't have a power supply that was 5 volts that was big enough other than that computer power supply. The new oil pump has a very good oil flow. Now if I just dip this screwdriver here, I don't know if you can see, that's without the pump running of course. Just a tiny bit of oil on the end. If I turn the pump on, give it just a moment, you can see loads of oil I hope on the end of that screwdriver. It's just the noise. In every other way it's fine. I don't know. We'll see, won't we? Um, this is the peristaltic pump, the small one that I got to replace the gear pump. It's almost silent, but it just doesn't have the capacity. Well, a success in many ways. I just need to get some earplugs, don't I? I'll probably get a stop-start switch or a timer on it, but I'll need a different timer because the one you saw was for 5 volts and this motor's on a 12 volt supply. Anyway, some jobs just go like this, don't they? Thanks for watching. Just a postscript. I'll just have to remember to turn it on when the lathe is operating on the low speed range. I don't need it on the high speed range. It'll do for now.